I'm Fiona Campbell, an artist based in Somerset, UK at the moment. I went to Kenya for an art research trip in November 2022 as part of an Art Council England Developing Your Creative Practice Award. The aim was to immerse myself in Kenyan culture, especially the contemporary art scene. I was born and brought up in Kenya and have been wanting to revisit and reconnect with my roots, gain inspiration and insights to fuel my art practice. The first weekend I stayed at Untethered Magic, an art organisation focused on contemporary practice on the outskirts of Nairobi. Situated on the edge of the National Park, it overlooks a dramatic river gorge where artist Sierra Kiambi has her studio. I looked through their book collection, gathered materials and saw Sioia's masks and research images from her Caspali project. We met up with artist Neo Misangi and visited Justice Chialo at his studio. We walked through Kenyan wilderness across a rope bridge to Kitengele Glass, which has a rich history, glass workshops and sculptures scattered throughout the grounds. On the way we found lion tracks, hyena poo and other animal remnants. Charlo makes etched rust works on steel. He's particularly concerned with lime. He's currently building a new larger studio and I was interested in its fabrication. The weekend residency was a wonderful taster, which forged new connections. We had delicious African vegetarian food. Through stories and animated discussions, I learnt more about contemporary African thinking, politics, artists and local ecology. I left with collected goodies and the beginnings of a sketchbook journal. The next part of my trip was spent at the Kenyan coast at Malindi and Watamu, where I discovered more about its complex history, culture, physical geography, flora and fauna. On the beach at Watamu, I drew, collected found objects and used debris to make impromptu sculptures, one with a couple of beach boys, 
we had a little performance at the end. At Marafa, north of Malindi, there's a spectacular phenomenon, a vast depression of sandstone comprising layers of calcium, sulphur and iron. Sulphur heats the earth, so only a few trees exist there, hanging on by strangely formed roots. With help from locals, I found two rare surviving Giriyama grave posts in a nearby dwelling. Seeing a pod of 50 plus dolphins swimming was awesome, but I was very sad to see the coral depleted so much since childhood days. Malindi has a turbulent past, having been colonised by the Portuguese Sultan of Zanzibar and British. Gedi Ruins, a 12th century Swahili city, abandoned about 600 years ago due to plague, is now overgrown with magnificent indigenous trees and creatures. Encountering trees up close, drawing and making bark rubbings helped me get to know them. This city started back 11th, stop 12th of the century. Every city had a sultan. Gedi, Malindi, Mombasa, Alamu, Zanzibar, all this town each had a sultan. According to Kirkman said each city had a sultan, but according to Ibn Battuta said we only had two sultans. I had a private tour around Andorra Sculpture Garden with owner Carol Rasmussen, who explained the background of her vast collection of Zimbabwean stone carvings. Back in Nairobi, I spent a few days packing in gallery visits. Corona Artist Collective and Kobo Trust Studios are artist hubs. Selected artists are represented by Nairobi galleries, a few showing internationally, and it was great to finally meet some of them. 
David Thuku in particular spent time showing me around Kobo. I was interested to see the range of individual styles. A common element is using materials from what's around and a real inventiveness of techniques. At one off gallery, I met owner Carol Lees and collector Mark van Rampelberg. We had a fascinating conversation about the origins of the East African contemporary art scene, Gallery Watatu, and his book about this, titled Thelathini. Dickens Otieno met me at Red Hill Art Gallery and showed me one of his aluminium weavings. There are so many overlaps and resonances with my own work. Nairobi National Museum holds many intriguing artefacts, including an abu, a musical instrument made from gourds attached with wax and grounded bark. A photograph of a dismantled nomadic home strapped onto a camel's back inspired thoughts about retractable stick structures. Joseph Marumbi's extensive collection is displayed at Nairobi Gallery. On entering, a ceramic vessel by Magdalene Odundo has centre stage and makes a powerful statement about pioneer female artists in East Africa. Before a tour with a student there, I met with curators Lydia Gatundu and Betty Karanja and we chatted about visual arts in Kenya and the Ngechi art movement. On show at the Nairobi Contemporary Art Institute, founded by Michael Armitage, is an exhibition of 10 artists, some who are part of this story. Mwili Akili Naroho, Mind, Body and Soul, echoes early Greek philosophers who defined man as body, mind and thymos.
In my last week in Nanuki, visiting family, a busy market, and being with wildlife, I made paper casts of a baboon jawbone and antelope horn I'd found, drew acacia galls, and finished my journal. I've since made a small book from my tree bark rubbings. There are many meeting points where new ideas converge with past, and I'm looking forward to exploring these. I also hope to return for a residency. Yeah, man, it's a